Hey, what's up everybody? This is Justin from Siage Scents, and today I've got a video for you about fragrances that have been kind of mind-blowing. They've been kind of breathtaking for one reason or another, and uh, I think you're really going to like these. As we get going, let me know in the comments, have you tried them? What do you think of them? Or what kind of fragrances would you add to this list? Also, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I've got new videos coming out a few times a week, and uh, I look forward to interacting with you as you're commenting. All right, this first one. This one's been mind-blowing because it is super cheap. It's like a $25 fragrance, and it is powerful and long-lasting, and it is absolutely gorgeous. This is one called Kayed al Fursan. And so, of course, this is a Middle Eastern fragrance. It's kind of in the style of Creed Aventus, although I don't really think it's a clone. And what you're going to get in this one, in the top, you're going to get an explosion of pineapple, probably the strongest pineapple scent that I own. It's actually got pineapple and some saffron in the top, but mostly you're going to get that pineapple with a little bit of texture from the saffron. And it's amazing. And that pineapple sweetness lasts you throughout almost the entire fragrance. And this is like a 10 to 12 hour scent. Once you get into the mid, you've got some jasmine and some balsam fir. And then once you get to the dry down, you've got some amber, cedar, and oud. These are the uh, things that it lists. But in the dry down, it does get... Uh, it does remind you of Aventus for sure, just like the opening does. So it's in the style of Aventus, but it is something different. And for the price, this is one of the best fragrances in this price range on the market. You will absolutely love it. If you love pineapple, if you like Aventus style fragrances, this one will blow you away. All right, the next one I'll mention, this is a new pickup for me. It's one I've been eyeballing for a long time, you know, hearing some good things about it, of course, but I hadn't pulled the trigger until about a month ago, I placed an order and I saw it for $36 and I thought, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up. I'm talking about Dunhill Icon. Now, reviews on this fragrance have been kind of all over the place. I've seen people who said it's average and it's just sort of a... Uh, citrus summer scent without a whole lot going on. But I'm telling you, if you have a sensitive, sort of developed nose palate, <laughs> however you say that, if your nose can distinguish notes, then you're going to get something from this fragrance that is unique and that is absolutely awesome. This is a fragrance where you're going to get some fruity sweetness in the top, You've got some bergamot in the opening. Let me tell you the actual notes that you're going to get in this one. You're going to get some neroli bergamot and black pepper in the opening. And that neroli does give it a little bit of a citrusy, slightly orangey feel. And then the bergamot, you've got just some beautiful fruity sweetness. And then the black pepper just kind of adds a little bit of darkness to this fragrance. But the amazing thing is, even though I love the opening of this fragrance, I love really the entire wear of this fragrance for about seven hours or so that it lasts on my skin. What you're going to get as it begins to dry down, you're going to get in the mid some black, more black pepper and lavender. And uh, these are not overpowering. They're not strong. They're pretty light, but they give you a very rich texture that's going to work beautifully with that fruity opening. And then in the dry down, you've got vetiver, oak moss, iris, and you do definitely get some iris in this fragrance. And then you've got leather and oud. The thing that's been crazy to me is I've seen reviews where people say, you won't get any leather, you won't get any oud, nothing dry in this fragrance, but I absolutely disagree. The way that this slight oud note comes through that beautiful, bright, juicy, fruity opening and the way that the leather comes through as well is absolutely awesome. I mean, it, it, it's complex, uh, it's not overpowering, and it is absolutely beautiful. That fruity sweetness, and then the whole time you're wearing it, you're getting these wafts of this beautiful fruit, slightly citrus 
brightness with some kind of brooding dark leather and oud and oak moss in the base. Again, I picked this up for $36, Dunhill Icon. This is an absolute amazing fragrance and one that uh, the price for the money or the uh, value for the price has just blown me away. It's been one of those breathtaking kind of fragrances. All right, the next one. I'll mention, this is one I recently mentioned in a kind of perfect cold weather scent uh, video. This one reminds me of snow. Although I have actually worn it in the summer, I've worn it all year round. This is a very unique fragrance, one that has kind of a three-dimensional kind of scent profile. It's a clone of Parfums de Marly Pegasus, and I'm talking about Armoff Craze. And so this is a metallic almond fragrance, and then you've got a powdery vanilla, or maybe I would say a dusty vanilla that's in there as well. And it is just, it's so interesting. Uh, the first time I smelled this fragrance was only about a year ago. I smelled the Parfums de Marly Pegasus, and this is very close to that. And what you end up getting in this, our moth craze, is you get this... Uh, beautiful, complex, uh, metallic almond, which I don't have anything else that smells like this, as well as this kind of dusty vanilla that does remind me a lot of snow, but it's just this rich, very unique fragrance that's really perfect for cold weather. Although in the summer, this is very interesting as well. Obviously, you're going to want to really dial your sprays back it's just this unique fragrance that reminds me of sort of like a, um, like a velvety white, if that makes sense. A soft white is what this fragrance reminds me of. Very cool. Uh, this one, or of course you could get Pegasus, but you know, you're talking $250 versus about $30. And uh, I can't brag enough on this Armoff craze. It's really good. All right, the next one. This is a fragrance that I recently called the perfect men's fragrance because I think it works amazing in every season. I'm talking about Yves Saint Laurent Y EDP. This is my favorite in the line. Uh, I have tried the parfum several times. I like it, but there's a complexity to this one that I would choose the EDP over the parfum any day. What you've got in the opening is a beautiful, sweet apple note, but you've got some uh, sage and some juniper berries. You've got some very interesting aromatic notes that mix in with that uh, sweet apple opening. And then you've got an ambroxan that gives it this incredible kind of sparkle, this really kind of rich sillage. And this is a very long lasting fragrance. This is probably a 12 hour fragrance. And then once you get into the dry down, you do have something similar to a lot of other blue fragrances, except you've got some amber, you've got some sweet notes, some vanilla in the dry down of this fragrance that are going to make it really good. Uh, you've got a sweet, aromatic blue fragrance that I think is kind of perfect for all year round. Of course, dial your sprays back in the summer. All right, the last one that I'll mention, this is one I've mentioned in a lot of videos, but I think it's overlooked nowadays. When it came out 12 or 13 years ago, it was very popular, but I think this is one that the fragrance community needs to bring back with passion. This is one of the most complex fragrances that I own. I think it's absolutely awesome even though, again, it's been out for over a decade. I'm talking about the original Amen, Mugler Amen. This is considered to be the kind of original gourmand, the first gourmand, you know, a fragrance that smells like a dessert, something that you could actually eat. It's so complex, though. In the opening, you've got uh, some sweet notes, which that's literally something that they put in the note breakdown, sweet notes, but you've also got some lavender and mint in the opening. And so when you first smell it, you would think, oh, this is going to be some kind of like a, you know, aromatic fougere or something like that. But then once you get down into the dry down, you've got some very interesting uh, sweet notes. And I'm going to give you 
uh, some of the actual note breakdown. You've got uh, some coriander. You've got some green notes. You've got uh, some fruity and spicy notes. I'm telling you, they just kind of give you these broad uh, phrases that describe an accord that it's kind of hard to define exactly what you're smelling. But then once you get into the mid, you've got honey, milk, cedar, jasmine, and patchouli. And here's the thing. You can smell honey. You can smell milk. You can smell the lavender. You can smell the mint. Uh, you can smell the patchouli. There, the, the complexity of this fragrance and the thing that's always blown me away about the original Amen is that you can actually, it's so well blended, you can pick out these individual notes. And it's like, it's almost like you're eating a very complex dessert whenever you're wearing this fragrance. It's not overly sweet, but it's got some sweetness and some powerful aromatic qualities. And then once you get into the base, you've got coffee, patchouli, vanilla, tonka bean, benzoin, amber, sandalwood, and musk. I'm telling you, it's very complex. But that benzoin, vanilla, amber in the, uh, in the dry down, as well as that sandalwood, it is so rich, such a beautiful fragrance, and one that I think is not getting the love that it should uh, nowadays, even though it's been out for a long time. This one absolutely blew me away the first time I smelled it. So there's many fragrances I could have put in here. It was challenging to uh, keep it to five, but... I've noticed that if I put 10 fragrances in a video, it's gonna be 15 to 20 minutes or more. And so these five fragrance videos seem to be kind of a sweet spot for me. But let me know in the comments which ones of these you've tried. What do you think of them? What would be your additions to this list? And please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate those of you who are watching these and showing me support. And uh, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.